Hi and welcome to this video about one of the most recognizable aspects of Windows which is the registry. In this video we'll take a look at the five main hives that we see in the registry and look into some of them, at least some of the more interesting ones. Okay, so in order to see what's going on in the registry we need to use some kind of registry viewer. I'm going to start with the built-in Windows registry editor known as RegEdit. You can just run it, it's a built-in tool and then we'll be presented with something like this. We can see here uh, the computer and it has these five main hives. Each hive has some kind of meaning. So let's take a look at the main hives. The first one, which is probably the simplest one to understand, is going to be HK Local Machine. HK Local Machine is about uh, information which is stored on a machine-wide base. It's not related to one user or another, it is a machine-wide thing. And so many important parameters of Windows are actually stored in this hive and in fact uh, most of the aspects and items in this hive are only writable by administrators, even some that are not even that. So let's take a look at some examples here. Obviously there are many interesting keys and sub-keys in this hive but I want to show you in this video just uh, a few. So one of them is HK Local Machine uh, System and then we have here something called Current Control Set. Another Current Control Set, there are a few interesting things. One of them is the one called Services. So Services is a subkit that has information about all the services that Windows has including a device drivers. So it's really about two separate things that seem to be kind of separate and in fact in many cases, in many respects they are. We have Windows Services. Windows services can usually be found in a more uh, easy to read uh, tool which is this one, the services applet from the control panel. And in fact what it does, it takes the information from this registry key, look at all, looks at all these sub keys and only grabs those that represent services. How do we know if one of these items represents services, a service or a kernel driver? The difference is with this type value. If the type is a small number, like 0, 1 or 2, this means a kernel driver, like in this particular case. If the value is 10 hex or higher, this is a Windows service. We can see in this example that this is type which a value would have a value of 1, and of course the image path here is a sys file, further reinforcing the fact that this is in fact a node representing a kernel driver. Here's another kernel driver, you can see again type is 1 and we have a sys file here as the image path. If we try to find something like a service, here's an example for a service, the type here is 10 hex, which means this is a service and of course we can verify that by looking at the image path, seeing this is some kind of executable. Now I'm not going to cover exactly what this type value really means and what are the various options for that, we'll probably talk about that in a separate video. But this is a list of the services and kernel drivers all bundled uh, in one. Another example of something that might, you might find interesting is this enum subkey. This enum subkey has uh, information about buses, some of them physical, some of them virtual. For example, here's the PCI bus or PCI Express. You can see various devices here based on their vendor ID and device ID, which is the way to identify devices uniquely in the PCI world. In this case, you can see there is some kind of device here and using the value of service here, this in fact points to the previous services key that I mentioned that has the full information as to where the actual driver is for this particular device. Another example you might find interesting here is the control subkey here. This control subkey has many subkeys on its own, of its own and they provide lots of lots of interesting information. I'm going to show you just one here. Under control we'll find something called the session manager and this has to do with this smss.exe process that is always running on Windows and has uh, various, uh, I would say, responsibilities, one of which is to map what's known as known DLLs. So known DLLs are DLLs which are being mapped very early in the boot process. In fact, SMSS is the one mapping them, creating section objects, making them ready to be consumed by other processes down the line. And since they're already mapped, loading these DLLs is fairly fast and you, can, you cannot spoof them. That means you cannot replace those DLLs uh, with, a, with a, your own DLL, for example, the same directory of, of some executable and hope that that executable will pick up your DLL. That's not going to happen. Known DLLs are always going to be picked up first. So this known DLLs 
He here has all the non-DLL names that are used by SMSS to map when just uh, Windows uh, loads up. Now you might be wondering why is that uh, current control set called current control set? I mean, uh, what does that really mean? If this is the current, maybe there's another one. And there's in fact another thing here called control set 001. So what is that all about? So technically current control set is actually a symbolic link or well, to be more precise, it's a link registry key that points to a different key. In fact, it points to this key exactly. Although the standard registry editor doesn't show that explicitly, it doesn't seem to show that this in fact is the same thing as this one. Um, we just can open that up and try to, uh, try to make the comparison and indeed it is the same one. Currently there's just one control set. If you want to see a little bit more details, you can look at using my own registry uh, tool called Total Registry that has uh, some more features compared to the normal reg edit uh, and many of these I'm not going to cover here but here's one thing if you go to system current control set you'll notice that current control set is uh, shown here with a different icon with a link icon which indicates this is in fact a, li a link key it's not uh, an, a key onto itself and here you can see that in fact this is pointing to system current control set 001 so that's actually control set 001 you might be wondering why the path here shows registry machine and this is because it's actually using the real registry something that regedit doesn't show but my tool here does show the real registry but that's going to be a talk for a, for a different a video so we have this current kind of control set here and lots of stuff underneath another perhaps interesting part of HQ local machine is under software under software you'll find all the uh, settings related to software being installed on your system. Many applications weren't being installed, they write some information to the registry, and this is where they typically write that. Under software you'll find uh, usually company name and then the product name, maybe some version and so on and so forth. So you'll find many things here including Microsoft itself that has uh, many many nodes here including something like a Windows NT and then with Windows 18 there's current version, lots of interesting stuff here such as uh, things related to Explorer and many, many other things that, again, uh, are not going to be covered here. So that's uh, basically HQ Local Machine. It gives us some information about the machine itself. It's not about a particular user, it's about the machine. Let's uh, move on to HK Current User. HK Current User, in fact, is the, showing us the hive of the user currently running this registry editor, whatever that registry editor might be. So we can grab this one, doesn't really matter. And so HE current user here is in fact a link key pointing to one of the users under HK users. And these users are represented here using seeds, using the security identifier. And so we have uh, these uh, well-known seeds like this one, which uh, belongs to the local system account. And there's uh, one for the local service and network service uh, account. And then there's something that like, uh, looks like uh, pretty, pretty ugly uh, seed. This is really my user. So if I open this up, this in fact is the same thing as we see here. So HK current user just points to one of the users that are stored here, which, are, which represent all the users that have ever been logged into my system in one way or another. They have a profile on my system. Okay, so that's current user and current user basically has stuff which is on a user by user basis obviously, which is not critical for the machine, but perhaps critical for the user, such as control panel settings, uh, console stuff, colors, whatever we have here in Windows, wallpapers, all the user related stuff is somewhere stored under HK current user. And then we have HK current config. This in fact is not a very interesting key. It was perhaps more important in the NT4 days before plug and play existed. So it's actually its own symbolic link, it, uh, well, link key, not, not symbolic link uh, per se, pointing to HK local machine, system, and then current control set, and then and there's uh, hardware profiles, and then current. So what you see here is what you see exactly here and these settings are not that interesting uh, nowadays but still it is maintained for compatibility reasons. Finally the last key which is probably the most misunderstood is HK classes root. HK classes root is weird because it is not its own true key. In fact it is a combination of two keys grabbed from HK current user and HK local machine. So HK current uh, classes root is a combination of HK current user software and then classes right here so everything you see here 
is being combined into H key classes root and the same sub key is combined with H key local machine software classes. So what, you, what we have here in H key current uh, H key classes root sorry is taking H key local machine software classes, what you see underneath that, and combining that with H key current user software classes. And in case there's any kind of uh, collision, maybe one value, one type, of, one key has the same name both of these on both of these nodes, then H key current user takes precedence. So you might be wondering what is that all about? What do we have in this H key classes root gigantic key? So the two basic things that we find here, one of them is stuff related to explore, like uh, association with uh, extensions. So for example, we know that txt files are by default opened by notepad. This should be somehow reflected here in the registry. So let's see. If I look at .txt here, let me just type quickly .txt, if I can type correctly, to get to the extension .txt right here. And here we can see there's a, there's a lot of stuff here. One of them is, um, is saying that there's some extension shell and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, we can see the default value, which is what we want to, to start with, which has the value txt file. So I'm going to continue looking for txt file, that this particular string, in the same root node. So txt file, here goes. And here's where we can find shell and an open command which uses notepad.exe here uh, to start this application with percent %1 being the first parameter on the command line. So that's one thing that you can find in, in HKey classes root. These are explore related stuff, not just file extensions, by the way, but many other things related to extensions to explore itself, such as context menus, uh, icon providers, and things like that. The other thing, which is kind of related to the extensibility model of explore, is related to COM, the component object model, uh, which is a way to, um, to work with uh, interfaces that are being implemented by various classes. And so the way that COM works in a nutshell, in order to locate a particular implementation of some interface you care about, the COM class needs to be reg registered, needs to be registered in the registry somehow, and that somehow is within HK classes root, specifically CLS ID, where all the class IDs are uh, gathered in a form of a GUID, which is a 16-byte uh, value that, when generated, guarantees some kind of uniqueness. So here's a very quick example, and perhaps I'll cover COM stuff in uh, later videos. Let's say I have this uh, Visual Basic script application here, or a file, and I want to create a, a COM object using the create object VB, uh, VB script uh, um, function, and I can provide here some kind of name. This is known as the programmatic ID or prog ID. And what happens is that we can map these prog IDs, which are just nice strings, which are human readable typically, and very convenient for us humans to work with, to the actual class ID that we need to create, the system needs to create. And so with VBScript, we don't have to create, we don't have to provide the, the actual class ID, we just need to provide a programmatic ID if indeed that thing exists and allows us uh, and provides a kind of mapping and we'll see that indeed it exists on a typical Windows system. And then once we have that, we can call methods on this object that implement some kind of interface. Again, we're not going to go into the de details here because that would take us outside the scope of the registry, but we'll cover that in a future uh, module. Uh, future video that is. So for example, you can use the method called file run, which is supposed to launch the run dialog box. And so let's try this. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to my uh, window here, the command window where I've saved this, this file. So let me just uh, run this. I'm going to use shell VBS to run this thing. And it's, although it, I can't really prove that very easily, but I've, the run dialog box has uh, been uh, initialized and shown in my other screen. So I'm grabbing it here. Here's another example. Let's change that to set time. Set time is a different method that's going to launch the UI that is uh, available on the current system to change the system time. So I'm going to run this again and here's what I get. I get this thing opened up uh, directly at me. And again, uh, I can't prove that perhaps 100%, but 
feel free to try these things yourself and you see that indeed this is what it does. So let's see how this object gets created at least from the perspective of the registry. So this shell.application, what is that? It's supposed to be somewhere here within the directly under hkey classes root. So let's find that. Here's shell.application. And since this is a programmatic ID, uh, it has to point to a class ID to actually be creatable. And you can see there's a subkey here called CLSID, which is looked up by the VBScript engine. And you can see there's a class ID here. So I can copy that. Sorry, I meant to just copy that. And then we can look that up under CLSID where all the real class IDs are stored. I'm going to open that up, press Ctrl F and then paste and look for this key. And here goes, here's the key. You can see there's a nice name here called Shell Automation Service. It's just a friendly name for us mere humans. If you open that up, we'll find there's a subkey here called Improc Server 32, which points to actually where the particular class is implemented. In this case, that's in the Shell 32 DLL, which is part of System 32, which is the thing that is being loaded into the VBScript uh, process, uh, the engine that uh, uses this, uh, this class. And in fact, we can prove that in, in many ways, and I'll do that in a, in a future video. But at least you can see here that the registry under HK classes root is used to map class IDs to where they're actually implemented. If you just grab some other random class ID of your choosing, you'll find that if you have an Eproc Server 32, it means that whatever that class represents, in this case, it's called the home group confirm page, whatever that may be, it's implemented in this DLL. In some other cases, you'll find a different kind of value that has uh, uh, not in proc server 32, but in fact, but something different called local server 32. So I can uh, look for that just to give you an example of what that would look like. So local server 32 means that what we have here is a com class that has this GUID and has this particular um, friendly name is actually implemented in an executable. Uh, which in this case is this executable right here. And so COM classes can be implemented by DLLs, which means this will be loaded into the process of the client, the one that's calling the core create instance API behind the scenes to create the instance, or they can be implemented in a, an executable, which means that a separate process is going to launch and host that object, and some kind of communication is going to happen between the client and the server process. And the same ideas apply in the sense that I'm going to call methods over some interface. Although in this case, it, there is some intermediary communication happening there, but it is all handled by the COM infrastructure, which is one of the nice things about COM. So these are in the nutshell the five hives that we have in our standard registry. In future videos, we'll take a deeper look into the registry, like looking at the real registry and perhaps look at some specific aspects of the registry.